Well, good morning, folks. I want to do some follow-up on these bioreactors, which are still cooking with gas, right? Not that kind of gas, though, the gas that they're making. Um, we're sitting just over 160, about 161 degrees right now. Uh, I took that one's temperature. It's a little lower. It's about 155. I wanted to answer some questions and do some follow-up on some comments that were made about this video. And every time I put a video out on these uh, bioreactors, I get a lot of people that have a lot of strong opinions that, frankly, I don't mean to be a dick or anything, but you don't know what you're looking at. You're not even familiar with the technology being uh, used here. And it's not, I guess, your fault. It's the, This is um, a unique method of composting. These are called bioreactors for a reason. And honestly, the right term for this really, you know, I hate to change something that, you know, Dr. Steven Johnson is the person that made this really famous, but I think he used the wrong word. These are really more biodigesters, and I'll talk more about that in the future, but I've actually disassembled one like four or five months into it, and I can tell you that the material inside is exactly like if you had a, a cow that went down and you examined a rumen that was like in the second stomach. It, it, it's literally a digestion process by micro, which all compost really is, but this is kind of doing it on steroids. So one person said, I'm really worried for you, okay? I'm already not worried. I've been doing this for six years now. I'm really worried for you that that thermal cycle is not going to last very long uh, because you're not going to, you say you're not going to turn it and you have to turn it or it's not going to get enough oxygen. Well, that's, that's partially true. It's going to get plenty of oxygen. That's what the air columns and the weed fabric are for so that there's never a point that this becomes an anaerobic environment. You're right. It's not going to stay thermophilic for long. For long, it will stay thermophilic for 10 to 25 days, with my personal average on the type of mix that I use being about 18 days. You'll still have some thermophilic activity, but it, you know the only way you'll know it is with a thermometer. Uh, you'll be down in the 90 degree range in the core and continue to drop from there. This is not a problem. These are designed <laughs> to take a year to make compost. It's going to take a really long time. Yes. Yes, this is actually a combination of composting techniques. Uh, it is a static compost pile. It is a thermophilic reaction initially. Long term, it acts as a static pile and it breaks down through digestion. Okay, and it also allows for age. And then in the end, this becomes a giant worm farm. As soon as the thermophilic cycle dives off, I'll go into my worms and I'll grab a big handful of worm castings and worms and I'll bring them out here and I'll seed this. Uh, the other thing is a lot of fungal activity in this. You probably can't see it yet, but it is coming. There's even, you know, just some fungi on the wood chips from them sitting over in the field. But in about 20, 25 days, you'll be able to look down inside these stacks and you'll see mushrooms literally fruiting on the inside of the stacks. They'll, they'll, po they'll poke uh, through the fabric and there'll be there'll be mushrooms anywhere little lbms everywhere tons of fungal activity this is a highly bioactive product that we're making here this is a finished version the wood chips on this one are this is another question people had is it you know how does this one work compared to that one this one is not working this is storage all those wood chips are doing on the surface is to make sure that this material doesn't dry out on us that's one year old compost that's what that's what we're that's what we're making over here also for my students who were here i think somebody asked me something about watering and what i water right away yes i said that but i meant the aging reactors we don't ever want these to dry out when they're in this thermophilic cycle for the first couple weeks i really don't want to add much water to them we have so much straw in there that's gonna stay moist it's not going to dry out and i like to make my compost in winter where that's mitigated anyway so about two weeks in is when we'll start daily watering of these systems they need to stay damp very damp, not soaking wet, but very damp. When we build them, they need to be soaking wet. Like everything you, you think you know about compost based on high turn and stuff does not apply here. This is a different system. I have a course on this system. It's only 40 bucks. Uh, it's been endorsed by people like Billy Bond and Jeff Lawton and Matt Powers. Um, if you wanna know exactly how to build these from the ground up, exactly how to use it, exactly how to do everything with it, why we do what we do, how we do what we do, what materials we use, all of it, that's in the course. And it's it's like a nine hour uh, set of coursework with exam and certification. 40 bucks is a deal on it. Um, 
I had some people tell me uh, the other day that you should just show us exactly how to do everything. Well, I, 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 I'm sorry, Mr. Entitled Gen Z. I, 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 I can't take the time to do that for no money at all. If you really want to know how to build one, you can probably figure it out from here. And I'm even going to give you some more stuff on it. Uh, one of the things we use is we use this rebar. And for uh, seven stacks, we use two pieces of this. Two for each, or I'm sorry, 14 pieces, two for each stack. They go down inside and they get pounded into the ground. And they hold that stack to keep it straight and vertical. If you look, they're fairly evenly placed. There is no place anywhere on this reactor where we're more than 12 inches from an edge that can breathe. This is how we make it breathe. This is why it will not go anaerobic. This level will decline, and I will take one of them, and I'll do an experiment I've never done before. That will come in a future video. But it has to do with the fact that we did not use all of the coop material, and you can figure it out from there for yourself. This, again, is an aging reactor. The purpose of this is just to store compost that is complete to keep airflow in it. Again, we we're looking for the distance to be no more than one foot. But this is not how I build a composter. This is for storage only. I'm not worried about breakdown. We want these multiple air columns during this phase of the project. We do not want to go right to this. Plenty of people have tried it. They've gotten very poor results. I've tested the compost before and after storage. It only gets better in here. But when you're looking at the initial breakdown, this is what Dr. Johnson designed, slightly modified to make it easier for people without heavy equipment because you're not going six foot up to fill it. It's a little bit bigger around it. Composts almost as much material. Another person has said, this is only for people with lots of room because you can't keep it around for a year. You know, if you're making this much compost, you're probably not using it all at once anyway, uh, Margaret. I'm sorry that you're upset about it. But the reality is this isn't that big. And these are completely adaptable. If you wanted it to be less in circumference, you could simply make it shorter. All it's done is held together with reusable uh, heavy-duty zip ties that hold both the material on and hold the fence together. This is three-foot horse fence. It's available anywhere. One of these will fit just fine in kind of that alleyway area that most suburban homes have where you have a fence coming off the house one side has the gate maybe i wouldn't want to put it on that side but the other side usually is just kind of lost space it's gonna be very shaded back there very very a secure location very sheltered it's perfect for this you want to treat this like it's alive you want to treat this like a fish aquarium it never ever ever can be allowed to go anaerobic it can never totally freeze all the way through and it can never dry out you have to do those things moisture airflow not freeze if you live in a place where it's just gonna freeze there's some things we give you in the course to tell you how to deal with that there's also reality sometimes you can't prevent that but timing when you make it has a lot to do with that as well it's clearly not going to freeze right now is it i don't care what the temperature does this pile will not freeze anytime for the next 20 to 25 days even 25 30 days into it when you're not getting a heavy thermocycle There'll be some heat in the center of it still as we still break down. And by then we'll have uh, worms added. Sometimes I actually add mushroom spawn as well. Last year uh, in one of them, I actually grew oyster mushrooms. That was pretty cool. And all it does is enhance things. The other thing we do is this right here, these rebar, we have some about one foot pieces. And when we set this up, we actually put short pieces of rebar, usually about six pieces you know, at like 12, 6, 3, 4, and then maybe on like 7 and 2 or something like that to keep it from going wonky on us. And then once we're done building, we pull all that rebar out. The other thing I was asked is, why do we stop using pipe? I have lots of pipe over there. Because what inevitably happens is these, these boreholes, no matter what anybody says about mycelium and stuff like that, sooner or later, they collapse. By doing this, these air columns stay open the entire time. All they are is more three-foot goat fencing. These are eight sections on this particular fence. You want to size them, but they're about four inches. And we simply cut them so that we leave a tag end off one. So we would cut it like right there. That would be your smooth edge. And then we use these pieces of wire to wrap them around like it is right here and hold them in that shape. Then we wrap them with landscape fabric we use either zip ties or something like cheap fencing wire. The stuff like for electric fencing is really cheap and works really well for that. One thing I wanted to point out, though, I was asked last year when we were doing this, can I just buy the cheapest landscape fabric I can get? That's what this is. 
And you can see it will make a second season, but it's really falling apart. That older one over there in the back, you can see it collapsing in on itself. The cheap ass fabric is not worth buying. You don't save enough. Buy good fabric, make your hole in your outer ring of your landscape fabric so that when you put that zip tie over, this part of the fence is bearing the weight, it'll be less likely to pull through. So there's some additions for my students in the course and that can help. If you don't wanna take the course to make your own, go ahead. I'm just telling you like 40 bucks, you not only will you know how to make it, know how to take care of it, but you'll know what to do with it. You'll know why you're doing it. You'll learn a hell of a lot more for 40 bucks. Uh, but that's up to you. I try to give you all the information you need to go ahead and make something like this. But if you want it laid out the way I do in a course, again, I have to charge for it. I can't take the time. I probably had, I bet you I have 120 hours of production work into that course. So to be able to take that time, we, you know, creators, we have to do something to monetize uh, what we do. But we give away a ton for free too, and at least I do. And again, you can try composting this way. I'm just telling you that we have not seen the best results from people who've done it. I came up with this just simply as a way to keep this. So now I can come in here, I can draw from it, I can use that compost, and I can go on with my life. Again, the pipes work, but you can't leave them in there. I don't care how many holes you put in them, they need to come out. You don't get enough airflow through the pipes. That's why Dr. Johnson recommend pulling the pipes on like day three once everything firms up. But again, I'm here to tell you, uh, you know, as we build these things, we've ha I've never seen one keep the bores open at six months, let alone one year. And so to me, this was a very simple modification. The downside is if you have three of these, you need 21 of those. They're permanent. The nice thing about the pipes is you could build one and three weeks later, build another one, pull the pipes and move to build your next one. So uh, that's the one downside. And you will use almost as much fencing to make seven of these as you will to make one circle because it adds up really quick, okay? That's just how the math works out. But if you have any other questions about these, um, other than can I make you a six hour video that shows you exactly how to make them for free? You know, anything other than that kind of extreme, yeah, ask me in the comments. I'll keep doing follow-ups on this one until we get through it. If you want to take my course, there's a link down there in the video notes. You can click on it. You can sign up for the course. And if you're like, well, is this jackass any good as an instructor? You know, that's a legitimate fair question. I'm, I'm not going to complain about you asking that question. I have another course available at the same website. You just click the link and click on courses. You can see all the courses that are available. There's one called Principle-Based Permaculture Design. It's a five-hour course exam, certification, everything. It goes over the 12 primary principles of permaculture. It tells you how to integrate it into design. I put a lot of work into it too. That one's free. You can take that course for free, see if I'm worth a damn as an instructor, and then you can decide if you wanna learn how to do this or make biochar or how to do cover cropping or anything else that we put out at homefoodsystems.com.